Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to uh, Morning Worship with Overcoming Deliverance Center. I count a privilege and an honor to come into your homes this morning to share the word of God. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I was glad when it said, come into me, let's go into the house of the Lord. Your house this morning may be your, your sanctuary may be your home, but wherever you are this morning, I want you to give God praise. I want you to give God glory. I want you to give God what is due to him. And that is his best praise. I want you to give God what you only you need. I don't know what you need, but God knows what you need. So this morning, I pray that you be blessed this morning. I pray that God will give you answers through the word of God. By the way, of a couple of, of announcements, join us every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. for community Bible study, every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for morning worship. Um, I just want to say thank you for those who participated in the uh, masterclass on sermon and preparation and delivery. It was a blessing. Uh, it was an intimate setting where we were able to share and to have communication. But first, uh, I want to give honor to our Bishop-elect Charlie Watson, our First Lady Brenda Watson, and our, and our pastor, Pastor Bettina Watson. As many of you know, October is Pastor Appreciation Month, as well as Breast Cancer Survivor Month. So we want to give a shout out to our First Lady, Brenda Watson, for she is a breast cancer survivor, and we give God praise, glory, and honor for God keeping her body. So y'all that see her, give her some hearts and thumbs. Uh, she's on Overseas page, where y'all can give her some hearts and thumbs and let her know uh, and give her some blessings and shout outs that she has survived breast cancer. And we're so grateful for God giving her another opportunity to be amongst the, the land of the living. And so I'm grateful to God for this word today. Uh, as many of you know, we've been continuing in the series, Rebound for Opportunity. Rebounding for Opportunity. And before I go into the word of prayer, I want you to get your Bibles and turn to Genesis, the first chapter. Genesis, the first chapter. And that's where we're going to pick up at. Uh, Genesis, the first chapter. And uh, then we're going to go and get right into the word of the Lord. Uh, I'm sorry, my uh, tablet is doing something crazy. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning for this opportunity that I can come and share the word of God with your people, God. I don't take this opportunity lightly. But God, I pray today that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God, hide me behind the cross this morning and only let you be glorified. Only let you be revealed to the people. And so, God, I thank you for using me as a vessel. But I thank you more than anything, God, that I'm available for you to use me. And for that, I say thank you. Now, God, open the ears of your listeners, God, that they will hear the word of God. God, that it will be sealed and imprinted on the hearts and minds of them. God, that this word will change the very life of what they're going through. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, we've been in a series, and we're going to continue to be in our series on rebounding for opportunity. And so uh, this morning, I want to do something a little different. Uh, the Lord impressed upon my heart uh, early this morning to take communion. We take communion first Sundays. Um, and so those of you that have elements, um, you may have crackers, some juice, water, bread, whatever it is, we're going to take communion. But it's going to be a little different this morning. Good morning, Yvette. It's going to be a little different this morning. Uh, I'm going to weave it into the message. Uh, but those of you that have uh, your communion, please grab some um, and please get, get it ready. Because within the midst of the message, we're going to move into communion because God is going to do something miraculous in this message on today. Did you hear what I said? God is going to do something miraculous in the midst of what we're going on today. God has gifted me with the gift of healing. And I believe today that God 
is going to heal some things today. I believe God's going to do some, some miraculous things in the bodies, in our minds, spirits, and our souls. And so today, uh, you know, you can, when God gives you a gift, you only can use it when he allows you to use it. Um, so God this morning warned me to operate in the gift of healing this morning. And so I'm going to do that. But if you have your Bibles, if you turn to Genesis, the first chapter. Now, I'm going to be reading certain verses throughout the whole verses of Genesis 1. Because I want to make a point of a point of reference to our message this morning. Rebounding for opportunity. Our subtopic would be, and God said. And God said. Genesis 1 and 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness covered the surface of the watery depths. And the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Verse three, then God said, let there be light. Verse six, then God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate the waters. Verse 11, then God said, let the earth produce vegetation after its kind. Verse 14, then God said, let there be. Verse 20, then God said, let the, uh, let the water swarm within living creatures. Verse 24, then God said, let the earth produce living creatures according to its kind. And verse 29, God also said, look, I had given you every seed bearing plant on this surface. Have we ever taken the time to really think about what God says. I hear these words in my mind over and over again. This week I did a impromptu Facebook live on what God said. But have you ever taken the time just to think about God? What are you saying? But the book of Genesis, it runs throughout the whole first chapter of Genesis and beyond. And God said, and God said, I want to remind you this morning that God has spoken a word over your life. God has spoken a promise over your life this morning. And I want you to know whatever the promise is and whatever the word that God has spoken, I want you to know this morning, God said. God said it. You've got to believe that God said it. The word of God in Genesis has been very controversial as it relates to the creation of heaven and earth. It has been said that other gods have tried to create the world out of other materials, but it didn't work. Many believe it was a byproduct of good and evil, but nevertheless, we must give credit to the creator. What we know for sure is that God did not need materials to create the universe. It was a divine decree that he spoke into existence, into everything, both physical and spiritual. It has taken man a lifetime to figure out how God did it in six days and he rested on the seventh day. God gave everything he created a name. Let me say that again. Everything that God created, he gave it a name. God was intentional when he gave it a name. What I'm saying to you, God is intentional in what he said to you. If you have to guess that God said it, if you have to wonder that God said it, I want to give you a secret. God didn't say it. When God speaks a word over your life, it is specific. It's intentional. And it always lines up with what God has put in your spirit. God called the light day and the darkness night. This was his sovereign authority that he was exerting into the earth realm. God branded his creation that was sealed with the redemption of his blood. You hear a lot in marketing about brands. God branded his creation with the words, and God said. No other person can take credit for what God says. I know we can put it in books, and I know that we can say a lot of cliches, 
But I want you to know today that God said a word in January. God said a word in February. God said a word in March, April, May, June, July, August, September, and October. God is still speaking. In the midst of all that we're going through and have gone through, God is yet still speaking. I don't want you to get discouraged because you've not seen the manifestation of your blessing. God is speaking in the midst of us. Dr. Erica, how do you know that God is speaking? Every time I look outside and I see the trees and the wind, the trees blow, God is speaking. Every time I look up in the sky and I see rain falling, God is speaking. Every time the sun is shining, God is speaking. And I know many people will say, how do you really know that's God? They begin to question the existence and the presence of God. And for some people, that could be a very wide question. We have not seen God in his fleshly being. But God said to us as believers, he said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I'm going to send you a comforter that in the name of the Holy Spirit that would rest on the inside of you that would give you what you need. He said the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you into all truth. And the one thing that I love about God is that when God gives us words or God gives you a word, it is a now word. It is a right now word. God speaks words to us where we are, where we're going and where we come from. Let me say that again. When God begins speaks words, he speaks words to your past he speaks words to your present and he speaks words to your future. I'm still on rebounding for opportunity. In order for you to rebound, you have to know what God said. God's platinum plan for us. And we heard the word platinum last week when those that went to the White House and Donald Trump uh, released his platinum plan, his two page platinum plan for black America. But God's platinum plan for us does not need approval from the House or the Senate. In the beginning, God says, that's the plan. So I want to remind you today. I'm going to take you through the days of God creation of what God said. Day one, God created heaven and earth. Day two, God separated the earth, the sky from the earth. Day three, God gathered into one place, all of the water, essentially pulling the land up to create the continents and the vegetation that came into existence. Day four, God created light in the expansion of the sky as we know as the sun, moon, and the stars. Yet you may ask yourself, why did he create these in the beginning? If he separated light from dark, where did the light come from before? I'm so glad you asked. Revelations 22 and 5 says, God became the light that was needed during the process of time. My God. Did you hear that? God became the light that we needed in the process of time. Light was always there. God had to put things in place in order so that the sun, the moon, and the stars came into being without any confusion. So in other words, the sun knew its job. The stars knew its place and the moon knew when to revolve. God knew how to put things in its proper place. God knew how to process us. God has placed you and I in the midst of a family, a church family, a community, He's placed you on a job. He's placed you in specific places because God has need of you where you are. We're talking about rebounding for opportunity. In order to rebound, you've got to know your place and you've got to know it's a process. Somebody say process, put process on the screen. It is a process that we must go through in order for God to get us to a place that he can reveal his perfect will to us. It is about the will of God that is best for us. Say God's will with me. It is God's will that we go through the process. Day five, God filled the sky and the seas, populated the ground with plants 
And he also, also made birds after its own kind. Day six, he saved the best for last. He said, let us create man in our image. He was referring to the Trinity. When the father was, the son followed and the Holy Spirit proceeded. He said, well, let us, at the beginning, all three of the Trinity was present. God could not create us with just himself. He needed the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to be present. Even though the Holy Spirit was not revealed to us into the New Testament, it was good that we have been afflicted. It's good that we have to go through the process. Now you may say, Dr. Erica, but my process is hard. It's difficult. I don't know what I'm going to do because God, I feel that my process, I can't bear it much longer. Can I tell you something? If you've made it today, you're making it through your process. My God, if you're listening to me today, you've made it through your process. It is a process that we all must go through. Nobody is exempt from process. We have to be processed. I'm not a baker, but I do know you have to put a cake in the oven and there's a process for that cake to rise. And I do know if you open the oven before it's time, the cake would fall. So God said this morning, I'm putting you in the oven. And I'm turning up the heat because I need for you to come out of the oven processed. He said, I'm molding you and making you and forming you and shaping you for your next move, for your next assignment. So don't you grow weary because you feel as if I don't hear God saying to me. I don't hear God speaking to me. God is speaking even when you don't hear him. Why? Because he woke me up this morning. Can I say it again? Why? Because he woke me up this morning. And not only did he wake you up this morning, he breathed into the nostrils of man and man became a living soul. You're living because you're listening. You may say, but Dr. Erica, the process of mine is different. You don't really know what I've been through. You don't really know God, the how, where I'm at. If it don't happen, God, if God don't move tomorrow, Dr. Erica, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have an answer for that. I need for you to hold on and dig deep into the word of God. And I need for you to do, for you to do like Jacob. Don't you let go until God blesses you. I need for you to hold tight to what God is saying. And don't you let go until God moves it, until God changes it. God is a God of change. He's a God of victory. He's a God of overcoming. We are overcomers. We are victorious through him. We are overcoming and overcomers. The serpent presented himself to Eve as the weaker vessel. The serpent said to Eve, indeed, has God said? He asked an evil question. In other words, Eve, did God really say this or did you really imagine this? God, I don't think God would have said it to you, Eve. He asked the question to manipulate by saying, has God said? I asked you the question this morning. Is the enemy whispering in your ear and trying to get you off track to make you think, did God really say that? Did God really say he was going to bring me out of this storm that I'm in? Did God really say that I was going to be the head and not the tail? Did God really say that, 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 this, this too shall pass. God said it. Eve took the low road that led to a lifetime of pain. Eve took something that God said, don't touch. But isn't it amazing that God gave Adam and Eve everything in the garden? He gave them access to everything around them except one place. And isn't it amazing that sometimes the very thing that we should walk away from, we're drawn to? <laughs> isn't it amazing the very thing that we should run away from, we run to it? We have to get in the mindset, did God say that? And I know we've been taught, and it's been ingrained in us, we should never ask God why. The Bible didn't say that we could ask God why never said that. 
The Bible did say, and all I getting, get an understanding. And sometimes in getting an understanding, you have to ask why. God, why did this have to happen to me? God, why did I have to lose my husband? Why did I have to lose my child? God, why did I have to lose my job? Why did I have to lose my car and my house? Why? God said, you, I'm going to give you understanding through my word because my word cannot lie. Sometimes God allows us to be stripped away from things for us to see who God really is. I believe this, that when God takes our loved ones, I believe this, this is my personal opinion, that they feel their kingdom assignment here on earth. I believe that. Whether it be by tragedy or whether it be by the hand of natural causes, I believe their earthly assignment was fulfilled. The word of God has been questioned and it has been attacked. The serpent's words focus on two important elements. Listen to this. When, they, when the snake came to Eve, there were two important elements that God's word spoke. It spoke to the accuracy and the authority of God's word. Did you just hear what I said? We have authority over the enemy. We have the authority of the word of God that we can speak to our situation. And do you not realize he said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose in on, on earth shall be loose in the heaven. Some of us need to bind some things and loose some things. The reason why some of you are still in the same state you are in, you've not learned how to walk away. You've not learned how to bind some things up. You've not learned how to walk away from the very thing that has caused you that pain. God never intended for you to live in pain. Now, will I experience some painful things? Yes, I will. But God never intended for you to live in a state of pain be it physical or spiritually. God wants us to live victoriously. You may be asking the question or wondering, what does it have to do with rebounding for an opportunity? The reason some of us can't rebound, succeed or finish what we have started is that we simply have forgotten what God said. What God said. Rebounding from anything is a process. Rebound, rebound means to bounce back through something, to come back from something. Some of you need to rebound. Some of you are in the same position. We talked about being in the right position. Some of you are point guards. Some of you are on the defensive side. Some of you are on the offensive side. But whatever position you're in, know your position and know your place. But most of all, know your kingdom assignment while you're in that place. God's place and God's life for you is much greater than you and I. Our minds cannot comprehend the things that God has prepared for us. The God that I serve can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever think, dream, or even imagine. And if you could allow your mind just to go there for a moment and imagine God, that this thing that I'm going through, it will pass. I will come out of this and I will come out not smelling like I used to. I will come out smelling like a rose. I told you the other week, you're carrying too much. You've got to let some things go. And that may mean letting some people go. I want you to come out smelling like a rose. I don't want you to smell like the process that you came out of. Some of you are, are in a dirty process. Some of you are in a process that, that, that if you come out, people are going to question, is it really God? I want you to come out knowing that God did this. Some of us and most of us are going to have to go back and correct some things and say, God did this. Can I have a moment of transparency? On Saturday, um, some of you all know, you may not know, um, I thought I heard a person say something to me on, to me on the telephone. I, I misunderstood what they said. So I repeated it to another a person. But I had to go back and apologize to both parties because I thought I heard something different. And that's not what was said. And some of you saying, well, Dr. Erica, you I did it. I apologize to each person 
because I wanted to make it right. I didn't want them to think that I was trying to do something different. What am I saying? Some of you need to go back and apologize. That's why you can't rebound. Some of you need to go back and ask for forgiveness because that's why you can't rebound. Some of you just simply need to let some things go and just walk away from it so that you can rebound. It is about coming from a place of victory. We get stuck in places and we never consider God until it's too late. We never consider God until we fail. We never consider God until God is our last resort. Why do we wait until we have failed something? Why do we wait until we feel like, God, this is it? We should bring God in the beginning of a thing. Did he not say in Genesis, in the beginning, God created? So in the beginning of your trial, invite God in the process and say, now, God, I'm going through this, but I need for you to hold my hand. I need for you to walk me through this process because, God, if I don't have you with me, I won't make it. It's just that simple. I'm not going to use eloquent words this morning. I'm not going to come to you with deep, deep revelation. I just want you to know that God said, this is your time. This is your time. This is your time. So I want you to know this morning that whatever God is saying to you, open up your spiritual ears and your natural ears to receive from God. This is your season of healing. This is your season of breakthrough. You're not a failure. Stop telling yourself that you're a failure. You haven't failed. You just had a minor setback. All you got to do is say, God, bring me to a place that I can receive from you, that I can hear from you. I want God to be glorified in all that God is doing. So this morning, I want to remind you this morning, you can rebound in the final quarter of the year by remembering what God said. Now, I'm going to go slow, but you can go back and catch this on replay. But I want you to remember this and repeat after me. God said, I am above and not beneath. God said, I am the lender and I'm not the borrower. God said, I am the head and not the tail. God said, I am an overcomer and I can do all things through Christ that gives me the strength. God said that we are more than conquerors. God said, I am healed. God said, I am rich. God said, I would never know. God said, you never knew pain. You would never know him to become a healer. If you never knew sadness, you would never know him to be a comforter. Let me say that again. God said, if you never knew pain, you would never know him to be a healer. God said, if you never known sadness, you wouldn't know that God could be a comforter. God said, I will be with you even until the end of the earth. God said to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So God said this morning, that God said to me, Erica, I want to do some healing this morning. And I, earlier, if you missed it, I asked him to get their elements of communion. We do communion on the first Sunday. But this morning, God wanted me to bring communion into the midst of our message. God has given me the, the, the gift of healing. And this morning, God wanted me to speak to some specific areas of healing today. So I want you to grab your elements. Grab your elements. If you don't have your communion elements, get some water, crackers, bread. Get the closest thing you can get to communion. He said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So we don't have to always do it first Sunday. But today, God said, Erica, I want you to use communion because I want you to speak to some healing today. So the Bible says that on the third day, that his bones were broken. His body was broken for us that we may receive our healing. So as we break the bread together, Let's eat of his body. And then he says to us, 
He said, this is my blood that was shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's drink of his blood. So as we partake of Holy Community morning, I want to prophetically speak this morning. I want to speak to cancer this morning. I want to speak to breast cancer this morning. I want to prophetically speak to breast cancer this morning. I pray this, that God will go into every lip node. I pray that God will go into every cell and every tissue. I pray that God will go into every area of the breast, the chest cavity. I speak healing right now. I speak that God will dry the cancer up. That when you go back to the doctor, there will not be any trace of cancer in your body. I'm a shut up. I speak healing to cancer of the lungs. My God. I speak healing to cancer of the lungs. Whatever the, the fluid and the tissue that's been building up and your lungs is filled with I speak healing that God will clear the lungs. Mama Shata. That God will clear the lungs. I speak healing to the lungs this morning. I speak healing to the to our uh, circular system of our body, to our, our tissues, our muscles. I speak tissues to our arteries. I speak healing to our, our every organ that's in our body. God said in this final season, he said, I'm healing us from our head down to our feet. Why is God going to heal us? Because God needs us to finish strong in this last season. Some of you this morning need to go to your loved one's house. You might not can go in because of COVID, but I want you to stand outside that door and begin to, to declare and prophetically speak healing over their body. Speak healing to that suicide mind. I speak healing to their spirit of depression. I speak healing to the spirit of oppression. I speak healing to the spirit of schizophrenia. I speak healing to the spirit of bipolar. I speak healing to the spirit of personality disorder. I speak healing. I'm a shatala bokondo. I speak healing now. I speak the divine healing of, of, of the blood of Jesus. He shed his blood for our healing. My God, he shed his blood for our healing. He said we have the power to speak. And whatever we speak out of our mouth, God said, I'm going to perform it. So whatever you need healing for in your body this morning, God said, I'm healing it right now. I speak healing right now to your body. I'm not only speaking healing to your body. I'm speaking healing to my body. I need healing in my body. So I'm speaking it. So we're in this thing together. I speak healing now. I release the spirit of healing now. I speak healing that the arteries in the heart will begin to pump regularly. I speak healing that the blood will flow. I speak healing to every clock artery. Mm. I speak healing to every muscle and every tissue that's not properly functioning. I speak it right now in the name of Jesus. Because God is doing a new thing. I speak healing to broken relationships. I speak healing to broken marriages. I speak healing to families that are experiencing chaos. I speak healing to autism. I speak healing to those that are suffering, God, from physical disabilities. I speak healing. I speak it. I declare it. And I decree it in the name of Jesus. I speak healing. Oh, no, I speak it. That it's going to be done. Oh, yes. God said it's going to be done. Oh, yes. God said, Erica, it's going to be done. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, those of you that are doubting and not quite sure, I want you to, I, God just spoke in my right ear. It's going to be done. I'm not sure. God says healing is going to be done. The enemy cannot take from you. He may have stolen it before, but God said this time it's going to be restored. God said, I speak restoration. God said, I'm speaking restoration. Restore God. God, restore to us the joy of your salvation. I speak it now mm, that it shall be done. I prophetically speak this morning that, that this year that God's going to make us stronger and we're going to be much wiser. God said it may have started out rough for you. But in this final quarter of this year, 
God said, I'm making you stronger and I'm making you wiser this year. Mm. God said he promised us that he would never leave us nor forsake us. That he said he would be with us to the very end. And I know some of you are at the very end. And if God don't come now, you don't know what you do. But I want you to know this morning that healing is the children's bread. I speak healing now. Did God do a new thing? I speak it. I decree it. I declare it. So while we're in the season of rebound, I need for you to rest and be assured if God said it, you need to believe it and it's settled. It's settled. It's settled. It's settled here on earth. And if it's settled here on earth, it's settled here in heaven. So right where you are, I want you to lift your hands right now and begin to give God glory right now in the midst of all you're going on. I need for you this morning right now to hold on. I need for you to hold on. I need for you to hold on and not give up. Not throwing the towel. I need for you to hold on. Hold on. God's not through with you yet. I don't own the rights to the song by your by um Leandra Johnson. But she said, hold on. Trials come and they may go. Ah, my shine that condo. Yes, Lord. But God's going to do it. Yes, he is. God's going to do it. He cannot lie. God cannot go back on his word. If God said it, you stand on it. You believe it. This is your season. I'm trying not to cry, but I believe God. I feel the healing virtue on me. I can't touch you, but I place my hand on the screen. Lay your hand on your body and be declaring that healing over my body. Build your hope on things eternal. But you hold on. Hold on. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. Oh, God. God, I thank you. God, don't you give up. You've come too far. God's brought you through too much. You have not failed. Oh, God, I thank you. Oh, God, I thank you. So you keep the faith. And you trust God in this season. Hold on to God's a changing hand. I got to get off because I feel myself. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So while we're in this mode, if you want to sow a seed, if you want to give in this atmosphere of worship, this is the time to give. While the atmosphere is right, sow a seed. Sister Kim's going to put on the screen on our methods of giving. Sister Yvette's going to put on the screen. If you first time visiting with us, uh, you received it. If you want to let us know who you are, we want to get information to you. Now, I'm trying to stop, but I feel God. Mm. I feel him. I feel him. I feel him. I feel him. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Mm. Just rest in it. Mm. Just rest in it. You just rest in it this morning. Just rest in it. You just rest in it. It's going to be all right. God's going to do it. Mm. It's going to be all right. God's going to do it. Oh, it's going to be all right. Don't you give up. Don't quit. Please don't quit. Somebody on here this morning, you thought about taking your life. Don't do it. God said there's more for you on the other side of this. Mm. Oh, glory, glory. My God, I am a satire. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Woo. 
Glory, 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 glory. Mm. So you build your hope on things eternal. Hope to God's unchanging hand. You may say, Dr. Erica, I don't know Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. But I want to come to note this God that you preached about this morning. I want to come and know this God that makes you shed the tears you shed this morning. I want to be a part of a family. It's very simple. The Bible declares for us that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. It's that simple. Now, if you said that Jesus Christ is your savior, let us know today that you made Jesus your choice. And if you did, this is the first day and the best day of the rest of your life. This will be your season of rebounding. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for your word. I thank you for your word today. God, your word came so timely. I thank you, God, for your healing power and your healing virtue that only you can do, that only you have the power to change. So, God, I pray now, God, that you would allow us to take this word in, seal the word that the enemy would not come and try to pluck this word out of us, that it would carry us through this week, that we would remember what you said. God, you said it. God, I believe it, and that settles it. I pray today that the word has blessed you. I pray today that the word of God has enriched blessed your life and your family's life. And if nobody's told you today, let me be the first one to tell you that I love you and there's nothing that you can do about it. Let the grace of God and the peace of God go with you and be with you on today. In Jesus' name, I love you. And we'll see you on Tuesday night for Community Bible Study. Grace and peace.